And welcome to another episode of Carry Out Conversations. It's so good to have you guys with us. My name is John. I'm Dave. And I'm Noah. What now? <laughs> what now? <laughs> Nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> Carry on. Last time you no, laughed I get at all, me I get, because... No, not at you. It's I get. It's not you. I just get silly when we start. It's not. It's no one's fault. Uh huh. Are you sure? Yeah, continue. I won't laugh. Okay. Are you sure? I'll try. All right. Okay. Well, what if I want you to laugh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was. That's what we call an intro in the business, baby. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! All right. Well, it's so good to have you guys with us today. Um, this is episode six of season two. It's uh. Yeah, been something of, like that. Yeah, yeah, something of the sort. It's been a very interesting season so far. Um, we have, goodness, we've basically done just about all we can do at this moment. Um, we are the epitome of uh, non-scripted, if you can't tell. Um, mm-hmm. We're very scripted. Everything is a bit, nothing is on the fly. This is down to the letter. We, we do write outlines yes. for our episodes, and then we... Stop following them. Yes, like very early on. Wait, you guys yeah. aren't following the outline? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I try to. <laughs> no, so because I have I have been asked the question before, like, what do we do? Like, how do we like prepare for a show and stuff like that? <laughs> prepare. <laughs> yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, we. What does that word mean? You spend months of research, just months and months and months. Yeah, how's our research team coming? Oh, dude, we're great. We're hanging out, drinking a Pepsi. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Um, and mm-hmm. I, I actually did do some research for this episode because I can think of a lot of things. Have you researched mic technique? Because you're like a foot away from the mic when you, you know said what? that. You know what? Um, me and my mic have a special relationship, okay? And your judgment <laughs> is not welcome. <laughs> that wasn't even a good joke. No. This is the problem. This is the problem with this podcast. I laugh at things that aren't funny now. Well, but then you don't laugh at the stuff that is funny. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's a problem. It's uh, I need to go to the doctor. Now, what is funny is, you know, we are on social media. We are on TikTok. We are on uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. Um, <laughs> everything that has to do with you getting yelled at oh, yeah. is like the top notch. That's like yeah. the, the top most viewed things on our pages. You guys um, just need to be more mean towards me. Oh, we can do that. Absolutely. Well, wait. No, wait. Maybe, maybe we should. Maybe we should pick someone else. <laughs> you want to? Yeah, you want to reset? You guess that? Yeah, I want to reset. <laughs> I think that. I think you guys are being mean. No, we aren't mean. You know we're not. It's all fun and games if we can't joke and pick sure. on you. <laughs> I'm not in danger at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in danger. <clears throat> I use that quote so much. Dude, oh my gosh, The Simpsons are immaculate. <laughs> the Simpsons, oh man, I have such a horrible backstory with The Simpsons, and I don't think we have time to really get into all yeah. of that because no. uh, at some point I will tell you guys because it is okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. That that to me is like breaking a, a universal rule. If you can't say you have a great story, and then say. But you can't hear. You just blue ball the audience. <laughs> Always leave them wanting more. We'll discuss it on another episode. Yeah. Um, uh, wait, we should totally do a Simpsons episode. At some point, we might. I, I'd be for that. Yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite shows. Okay, fine. We are. We keep talking about doing a uh, like a movie or like a cinema podcast. Um, you know, doing different shows and movies and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. you know, I think it'd be fun. I think, uh, I think this podcast too often devolves into cinema. Uh, well, yeah, because everything goes to Star Wars. Yeah. So or, War, or Warhammer. I'm really trying to get you guys to Warhammer. Yeah, it's not you're just the Star only Wars, though. That... Like Cinema is the way that people relate to a lot of things. That's, it's like, that's right. true. It's a story I've seen, or not just cinema either, a story I've read, a story I've seen on TV, a story I've seen in a movie. It's how people relate to things. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally think about 65% of my... Uh, uh, daily vocabulary are movie quotes. Well, the, um, that's something that me and my brother were talking about yesterday is how much our comedy was influenced by South Park. <clears throat> it's like, goodness, it's like, like seriously, because you, you think about the things you watch when you're growing up and what you find funny 
is shaped by the the things you should you not have been watching south park growing up no you I'm, should be watching south park now that you're an adult it's an excellent show but I, you should not be watching south park growing I, up i you're right but my parents didn't know so, <laughs> so i got to i got to watch south park <laughs> yeah it's a lot of stuff that a lot of stuff that we watch uh now or that we actually <laughs> Actually, let me, let me rephrase that. A lot of the stuff that I won't let my child watch, you watch? is stuff that I yeah, watched yeah. growing up under my parents' nose. Um, like, we lived, you know, down south, of course, you know, the 90s. Um, entirely different than what it is now. Mm-hmm. Me and my sister, my little brother, um, we stayed at home, like, all the time mm-hmm. by ourselves. Mom and dad was at work. You know, if we didn't go to school, we stayed home. And I can't tell you how many movies and shows and stuff that we watched without them knowing. And to this day, they don't know. And even if they listen to the podcast, they'll never know <laughs> what all we've watched and listened, you know, and stuff like that. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the kid thing. That's like, that's just a child thing is, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, there's getting away with stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. especially like watching a, a show or whatever. Cause uh, for example, I, a, a few days ago, I had you know walked upstairs to check on my daughter, and she was supposed to be asleep. And um, yeah, no, she had Scream on, and <laughs> not even a good movie. Uh, Scream is awesome. No, yes, no. The yes. only one that's good is the one with uh, oh, what's his name, Matthew Lillard. Lillard. I almost said Lawler. Yeah, that's but... the first one. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was like the second or third one. No. Yeah, no, no. First one's good. The rest suck. The first one's good. Second one's really good. What? The third one is the horrible. Like the third one is the worst out of the entire uh, franchise. Four is great. Um, was the new one any good? Because I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I haven't seen the newest one. I didn't one. see it because I didn't expect it to be good. I haven't seen the newest one yet. I saw five. Five was pretty good. When did five come out? Last year. Wait, so they made two in the last two years? Oh yeah, yeah. They're 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 bringing it back. They're pumping them out. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I haven't seen any of them. I, the only reason to watch it is because Matthew uh, Lillard. To be Lillard. fair, I'm not a horror fan. There's a long list of horror classic horror movies, even that I have not seen. Mm. Most okay, a lot of classic horror movies suck. Like some are good, some are good. Mm-hmm. But the problem with horror movies is like they rely too much on jump scares and not enough on good pacing and suspense. Like Alfred Hitchcock films are actually kind of scary sometimes. Yes, not like not in the like jump out and scare you cheap scare sense. But then, like, hey, I'm going to make you think about this for a week. Mm-hmm. And when, when you can get that level of fear where you're, like, drawing upon the uh, ex- existential dreads of human existence, that's good horror. Mm-hmm. So, but. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the classical ones, though, um, they, in today's sense, they're bad because we have gotten into that. Not, we're, we're so overstimulated that just nothing scares us anymore. So we look for the gruesome. That and we can't just sit and wait in suspense. We need something to happen right now. Yeah. Yeah, I I saw this uh this have you ever been on TikTok and they will have Yes, I have. Okay. And they have a video <laughs> of something under the video. Like they'll have a game playing on the side. Oh yeah, I've seen those where it's like a computer narrated voice reading yeah. a Reddit thread, and then yeah. there's some game playing underneath. I it. Yeah, I've that. seen those. I hate that because they're doing that to design. They're doing that to keep your attention. And the thing that yes. pisses me off is it works. Yeah, it well, works. Yeah. So so it's like I I don't I don't go on TikTok often, um, but I saw this dude post something on there where he's on a date with a girl and he's telling her this story and she's not paying attention. So he pulls out his phone and plays a clip of like some gameplay so so she can pay attention because we are at the point now with this overstimulation that people can't even hold a freaking conversation. Yeah. So when my daughter or son turns 16, they're getting a typewriter, not a cell phone. Okay. <laughs> I don't disagree with that. I mean, that would be kind of hard to deal with, but no, I actually, I, I think one of the, the cool things is you can get those um like limited phones. So it'll have like alarm, call, text, and a camera and like some other things, you know, and I think those are fine. Um, Typewriter is hard to carry around in my pocket. I, pff, no, I got got to get bigger pockets, bro. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the answer. Just 
I mean, we are a, we're a small pocket generation. In go that. back to the 90s. It's a problem. <laughs> you can go back to the 90s where you could literally fit a laptop in your in your pockets. In your, in your pockets? Yeah. I can fit a Kindle in my pocket. Yeah, no, Kindles aren't that bad. They're pretty big. Like they're like I, I, I'm surprised I could do that when I tried. Mm. So if you guys can't tell, we really don't want to talk about the topic that we were supposed <laughs> to talk about. No, we really don't. This is our second time to try. Um, well, it's is I yeah, it's uh, ironic. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, again, we are. This is the epitome of unscripted. Uh, You're unscripted. You know, we really don't. Uh, we really don't have a script or anything. Um, to go back to what I was trying to say earlier, how we prepare for our show is we come up with an idea usually between the three of us, um, we'll, we'll pitch it to each other. And as long as everybody's okay with it, then we form out like a, a very rough draft outline. Um, and, and then it. we ignore it after about 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Usually once we get started into the show, we just completely ignore right. um, if, our... <laughs> if this whole show down to the word was actually scripted, this would be genius. Well, yeah, it would be if we could do that. But it, no, 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 no. I mean, like the conversation we just had. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it we is could, if it were scripted, but we said it wasn't, and that was the whole gimmick. That would be amazing. Yes, but anybody who knows us knows that we can't keep a a mindset or a, an idea that long to try to script something like that. That's, that's we need improv classes. We are improv. This class. is an improv <laughs> class, Dave. Welcome to improv class. Yes. Yeah. Be you, funny or the die. listener or our audience. The wow. what? I just completely had a stroke there. <laughs> the R R R R D. Turned into a pirate for a second. <clears throat> the listeners are our audience. That's really hard to say. The, honestly, the listeners are are the listeners. Our, we are audience. Our audience. There you go. We'll just go. With that. Captain Hook walked in. What? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the topic. <laughs> yes, uh, we will talk about this. Um, Maybe only for five minutes, but we will talk about. Yeah, it. Yeah, we will talk about it. Now, um, something that that has kind of been going on with with all three of us, uh, in particular, you know, it's like with stuff at work. I know with me and Dave, um, you know, we have like a new transition going on at work. A lot of unnecessary. Um, complications. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Noah left us a few months back, so he's he's you know off doing his own thing. And so, um, when it comes to work, you know, it's like we only hear just little bits of what he's what he tells us. But there's always something that happens at work, or not even just at work, just in day to day life, where quite frankly, we just don't want to do anything. Yeah. Um. You know, it's like I can't tell you how many times. And one of the things that frust- frustrates me during this whole new transition at our work, um, you know, for those who don't really know, I'm not going to start name dropping or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find it. You can find out, you know, if you if you really know how to look. Um, the company that we worked for got bought out, got bought out by another company. Um, so me and Dave, we still have our same jobs, but it's just a different, you know, different brand. Um, but we've lost a couple of people along the way simply because they didn't want to do more than what they were supposed to do. Um, and you know, it, it, it frustrates me because especially right now in today's society, uh, a lot of jobs are losing valuable workers because a lot of stuff is pushed on them when it doesn't need to be, um, you know, now some of the workers that have worked with us, uh, have, you know, were great assets. Some maybe so much. Yeah. And I know that can be with any job or any place that you go, but, uh, but the, the whole point of it is, we live in that society where it's easier to say that's not my job mm. than to just do it for the sake of helping the company. Um, we live in a very selfish world. I mean, everybody knows that, um, you know, and 
being told we have to do things kind of brings out that that anarchist in us where it's like we don't want to do it just because we're told we have to do it. Well, um, go ahead. I was going to say, well, I mean, I, I don't think I have much of an anarchist inside of me because I'm quite literally an authoritarian. <laughs> but that was just a throwaway a throwaway joke. The yeah. um the thing is is these these employers often want more work with the same pay. Yep. And if the if we 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 live in a society where um it is generally agreed upon that you are paid to do X amount of labor. If labor increases, wage has to increase accordingly. Um otherwise you're just abusing the goodwill of your employees. And that drives people to leave jobs. And that drives people but, to yeah. leave jobs. The pendulum but, swings in both directions. Is right. Kind of right. what we're getting at. And, I think. and so, but that's why people leave jobs instead of staying in and getting promoted. Right now, one of the easiest ways to get better pay is to leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now that's not the case in every place, but across the board, that's generally the case. So you know, companies need to to realize uh, that they need to show loyalty to those who are loyal to them. Mm-hmm. And it, it's hard. Because, I mean, and I, I see it from both sides. Sure. Um, because, uh, you know, being an employee where we're at right now and, and being in the position where we are understaffed um, and needing help mm-hmm. and you get some of the people that come in. And right now it's kind of the, the weeding process where you get some people that come in that, that you know, fill out applications and stuff like that. And, and we're so short staffed that it's kind of like, you got to put your focus on them at the moment to fill in the gaps. Mm. And unfortunately, while you're doing that, you're leaving those that are loyal uh, workers out to dry. Um, You know, I, I I like, I know uh, during the whole pandemic thing, um, there were a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, a lot of hospitals that were losing valuable employees because they were putting bonuses on like sign in bonuses mm-hmm. for new hires. And then the people that have been there the entire time, they're just like, well, you've been here, you know, we yeah. appreciate you. Uh, here's a slice of pizza, you know, and, 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 that that's something that that gets me too. But uh, if we have a pizza party, we don't have to pay them more. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly what it is. Um, this point has been parodied to death by people on TikTok. Yeah, we're I, not oh, yeah. we're not that funny. Yeah. We're not no. that original either. No, um, but it's just like you know. Again, it's just you did you did mention it that uh, a lot of workers are required to do more for the same amount of pay. Yep. Um, and I wonder at times how, like, where the perspective lies. Um, okay. If a company is short staffed, you're not making as much money because the labor has gone down. Um, I can only go by, by our job. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with not having enough people to run the facilities uh, or to barely run the facilities, um, we're not making as much money because the labor itself has gone down. Yeah. Um, but we say this, like, well, if you pay me more, I'll do more. Mm. But then a company looks at it and they're like, well, I need you to do more so I can justify paying you more. Yeah. But so, so the thing I realized though is, um, if you look at how much companies actually make compared to how much they actually pay their people and how the insurance works out and all that, you're getting a crumb of a crumb. Oh, okay? yeah. And so, and so it's the thing of, um, it, in most cases, not even 10, 15% is labor cost. I mean, let's be honest, the building might even cost more than the labor in some cases, depending on the business, right? Mm-hmm. And so, or other factors involved in the business, like insurance might cost more than the actual labor. Um, and so, I, for example, today, I, me and my family went, we were like, okay, let's go to Wendy's. We're going to go to Wendy's for lunch. And uh, they were understaffed, and we waited at the front for 10 minutes. Nobody came to get our order, and so we left. Um, and so what 
they need to realize is that people are going to take their business elsewhere if things don't get done in a timely manner Mm -hmm. because people are impatient. And so if you actually looked, the best way to prove this to a business would be to look at a, uh, look at the, the sell the sales of them when they're properly staffed or better staffed. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you show them the numbers of when they're improperly staffed and you show them the numbers according to season because our, the job can be seasonal. Right. So you show them like summer numbers, three years ago when staffing was better, and then you show them summer numbers now. And once you once they see those numbers change, then they will realize, oh, well, we actually need to hire more people to no. make more money. No, they won't. Yeah. You can shove proof in their faces, and a lot of companies are still going to be arrogant and be like, oh, well, we can get it done with less people. Yeah, pride go with before the fall, pal. And there there are quite a few that do that, you know, where, where I mean, quite frankly, you know, it's like we we all know of a business <laughs> um, that we've all been a part of that was kind of like that where we were understaffed and we would reach out to management and just be like, Hey, we need this. We, we need to hire people. We need better thing, you know, to, to make our job, you know, not just doing everybody else's, but doing our own job better. And a lot of times it was like, well, you guys have done it so far. Just carry on, um, you know, and, and that, that right there isn't so much of doing stuff that we don't want to do, but it's just like having to get by um, with, you know. My favorite part is that that attitude carried into the building maintenance. Yes. So it, it, as long as it's good enough to stay standing, uh, we're good. Yeah. Don't, don't waste any money, you know actually doing any maintenance yeah we'll just we'll plug the hole with some uh okay. with, well, with some putty or something well so this this becomes a problem is how we how we view bosses in the workplace okay a boss a boss is not a boss they're a leader should be they have a duty no, they, they should be yeah they but right they they ought to be but they have a vocational duty to you not only to you but also to your family and to the people that are okay let me, let me preface this what i mean is in the sense that they are supplying the thing that you use to provide for your family and for yourself right? if you don't have a family. And a boss is not just there to bark orders. They're there to instruct. They're there to be a leader in that community that they are in. And if they don't take that seriously, they shouldn't be in charge. They shouldn't be leading men because that's what a boss is at the end of the day. They're leading men for a task. Now it's for their profit but they also have a duty to those people. Yes. Right? And so and so, if you're going to be in leadership or if you're going to be a boss or a manager, take that seriously. And don't just view it as like a, um, I do this and then I make X amount of money. But view it as like a serious responsibility of leadership and mentorship. Yeah, which includes listening. Which includes listening. Exactly. The best bosses are those who bust their tail for their employees, listen, and then accomplish what needs to be done. You know? Right. Like you'll go above and beyond for a boss who goes above and beyond for you. Yeah. For example, uh, not my direct supervisor, but another guy who worked in another department, right? He stuck his neck out for me on multiple occasions. And I, in turn, would do almost anything he asked me to do in the drop of a hat Yep. because he went that extra mile for me. Now, he wasn't the one signing my paychecks, but the other manager who I didn't have the best relationship with didn't sign my paychecks either. Mm-hmm. But the attitude was different. One was instructing and leading and helping and caring, um, even on days when I didn't deserve it, right? Um, and the other was not those qualities. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. so it's the thing of if you bust your tail for your employees, they'll respond accordingly. And if you actually care about the people who work for you, then they're more likely, you know, and you're always going to have bad apples. You might have an employee who just sucks because people suck sometimes. But generally, as a leader, you put something in, you might get something back. Yeah. Y- yeah. That reminds me of uh, a job I had previously. I was learning a new responsibility, and the person training me just had a habit of saying, oh, well, it's there in the manual. Well, I don't learn that way. I mm. learn doing hands-on. I have to actually walk through the process more than once to remember it, not just read a book that tells me how to do it. Eventually, I figured it out, a lot of, a lot of which was on my own. I am good at problem-solving a lot of the time, but still... That's frustrating to hear. And that that person 
didn't technically have any authority over me. They just knew how to do the thing. They just and, hired in before you. And yeah, yeah, and they were assigned to teach me how to do the thing. And they said, "Oh, well, it's it's there in the manual. Go read go read the manual." Like that's that's not how I learn. Yeah, well so well so that's the difficult thing is like a lot of bosses don't know how to effectively communicate. And you know, you You'd think for leadership roles, like a lot of these leadership seminars they take people to in these corporate jobs, they're garbage. They're horrible. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, but you want to, you know, a practical thing you need to know for leadership is how to communicate to different types of people effectively. Certain people learn by reading and listening, and some people learn by doing. See me, I learn by reading mm. primarily. Like if I read something, I can typically get it. Um, but if I'm, Listening to something, I can learn that way too. But hands-on, it's not my deal. It's not how I learn. Yeah, see, I, I'm the exact opposite there. I, I have to have hands-on. Like, I can literally have somebody standing behind me saying, all right, do this because this is what you're going for. Mm. And as they're telling me to do it, it's it clicks. Sure. Like, you know, a, a lot of the jobs that I have to do, one in particular um, I, I'm working on um, now, we just got in yesterday i've never touched this particular type of equipment before mm -hmm. um have no idea what i'm doing um but by sitting there and just literally playing with it for five to ten minutes i figured out the issue and it was just like hey <laughs> that's the kind of talk you want to hear from your mechanic i have no idea what i'm doing i'm gonna play with it for a while See, actually no that is what you want in the mechanic. yeah yeah because if you have a good mechanic they'll figure it out yeah. yeah and that's the thing is is a lot of people you know they they kind of wing it uh-huh and yeah Sometimes they'll get lucky, sometimes they won't. But then you get these people that just come in and they're just like, well, I, I know how to do this, I know how to do this, I know how to do this, I want this much amount of money. And then they get in and they have no clue. Like, yeah. absolutely cheap, no man. clue. Talk is cheap. So moving on uh, just a little bit here, um, I want to ask you guys some questions, uh, you know, because it's in particular... Like, you know, we can sit here and talk all day long about stuff at work that we don't want to do, um, you know, in particular work, uh, you know. Um, I, but I want to ask you guys just a few questions and get your input on some things because, you know, our day-to-day -day life is filled with a lot of stuff that we just really don't want to do. I mean, we're, we pick that up as a child. Sure. Um, you know, we're, we're told all the time you have to, you know, uh, clean your room. You have to brush your teeth. You have to eat your vegetables. You have to, you know, do your homework and stuff like that. And, and it's like, it carries on into, uh, adulthood where there's still a lot of stuff that we have to do that we just don't want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I want to ask you guys, uh, just a few questions here, um, and see what you guys think, but can you remember a time when you actually did whatever you wanted to do? I know this is kind of like just... Did whatever I wanted to do? Yes. Now, and what I mean by that is like, you know, you still have your responsibilities. You still have your, you know, your day-to-days that you have to do, um, you know. But can you guys actually just remember a time where you just woke up and like, I can literally do anything, yeah, yesterday. <laughs> sorry, sorry, but yeah, tr truly yesterday. Um, I I woke up. I made myself some food, and then I went to the library. And it, I did work. Like I was working on uh, stuff for a different podcast I do, um, and things like that. But it was uh, it, I enjoyed it. That was what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I uh, met up with some friends at, at a bar. So it was um, it was good. Like yesterday was just good, and uh, I don't know. I think I think there's a there's a lot of things I don't like doing that I have to do. Um, but I think there's a sense in which we should try, if you know, as much as we can, to enjoy the things we have to do and mm -hmm. find some good in that. So, but but yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I'm I'm pretty boring. A lot of the things I like, like, I'm going to be honest, I'm very boring. A lot of the things I like to do, most people don't like doing. Mm -hmm. So, like, I like just sitting in the, like, in the in the library reading. Like, that's just what I like to do. And I like smoking a pipe. That's about as fun as I get. 
a tobacco pipe, not a weed pipe. Like it's boring. I'm boring. So, so yeah, just boring stuff is what I like doing. Now I just see you with a top hat and a monocle. <laughs> no, no top hat, no monocle. I actually really want to get one of the Lord of the Rings. Cool him a chap. Yeah, you, you could cosplay as Mr. Peanut. Oh, thanks, man. That's my dream. <laughs> I mean, you could. You got the you got the the mustache. Kind of the mustache. What do you mean, kind on? of the mustache? Mr. Peanut has like I got a big mustache. Decently big. You could you could also pull off like the Heisenberg. Uh, I'm not doing goatee. that. I already I've heard that one. If you me. shaved it a certain way, yeah. I'm not doing the Heisenberg goatee, man. Mm. I'm not. I just got my beard back, like. And I then sh- and I then sh- get you the hat, and you know, you, you can go I, uh, cook I, some meth. I do have a flat cap. I do. That's one of the nerdiest things I have that I like. So I do have a flat cap, like one of the newsboys hats. I, I I do have to. I feel like I have to preface. Preface. We do not condone cooking meth. Whoa! Um, whoa! <laughs> just nerd. <laughs> Jesse. Yes. We must do cook. not. <laughs> Do not try that at home, kids. Yeah, don't make blue meth. Yeah. I want I want to become a chef and then I want a sous chef named Jesse just so Jesse. I can do do that. Be like, Jesse, we need to cook. Goodness. No chili powder. But chili powder's the bomb. <laughs> My stuff's the bomb, bro. Oh Dave, what what did you do that you like to do? Or like doing? Like what what is a day that you've You've literally just woken up and be like, I can just do whatever I want to do. I don't know that I've necessarily ever had that because even as a child, there was always something I wanted to do where I was limited. Mm. Um, if I want to play a musical instrument, I'm limited by you know the skills I don't have and haven't cultivated. If I wanted to buy something, obviously I'm limited by finances, even now. Mm. Um and a lot of a lot of my interests involve exploring things that um yeah i'm i'm always interested in like doing something with i don't know audio equipment or whatever and i can't just up and do that especially as a kid i couldn't mm-hmm. cuz i didn't have the resources i have more equipment now but even then there's stuff i still want to do and now i have a house to pay for mm-hmm. so wow yeah and i feel like that's that's kind of the the thing um with most people, uh, like Dave mentioned, is there's a lot of things that we want to do growing up or we want to do even as adults that we're limited to because of blank, um, you know, be it money, responsibilities, responsibilities, uh, mm-hmm. resources, um, just things and, you know, certain things in general that just don't quite line up. Um, you know, it's like I, I'm with Dave. I mean, now I I'm probably more boring than Noah because my days off, I don't do a single thing. Just sleep. I, I have done that before. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, um, cause I, I don't sleep much at nights. Sure. Like I just don't. Um, but you know, it's like I will go an entire week with very, very little sleep. And then my one day off, I make up for it. Mm. And my day's wasted because I, you know, slept three quarters of the day. Um, But, you know, it's like because of like responsibilities, because of life just happening, um, a lot of people don't have that where they can just be like, oh, I can go do this just because. Um, You know, it's like I, I dare say I'm jealous about it. Um because I would like to have the type of life to just be like, okay, this weekend we're all getting in the car. We're going on a road trip and just go because they could, um, you know, now there are, there are certain, you know, obviously there are caveats that you have to, uh, account for in order to make that happen. Um, but I have worked most of my life, even as a child, I've worked, I mean, you know, sure. you know, um, things that we had to do growing up, uh, that now it's just like, I look back and I think like, okay, I could go do this, mm-hmm. but I have to make sure that all of these priorities, like Dave said, 
you know, it's like uh, uh, having responsibilities. I have to make sure that um, the electricity bill is paid for. I have to make sure, sure the water bill is paid for. I have to make sure there's groceries. I have to make sure my daughter's taken care of. I have to make sure there's gas in the car. And by that time, you're either out of resources, you know, you're out of money, or you're so tired that you're just like, I just don't want to go do anything. Well, so at different points in our life, we're limited by different things, right? And so when you're a kid, you're limited by what your parents want you to do. And some of that's for your for your good, right? Like some of that's like, well, you shouldn't do that because you're an idiot. You're going to kill yourself doing that. Or or that's like just not healthy for you or it's a waste of your time or whatever, right? So So you're limited by your parents' will and their stewardship of you. And then as you become an adult... You're burdened by the fact, well, now you have to pay for some of these things or all of these things. And uh, now one of the main things limiting you is finances. And if you're a parent, one of the things that's limiting you doesn't mean in in a bad way. But one of the things that's limiting you is you have to spend time focused on your children. You're being focused on someone else more than you are yourself. And that's part of having kids. And that can be a great thing. But there's a sense in which... No matter where we go in this life, there's always something limiting the absolute freedom to go do whatever we want. Now, that kind of sucks because it feels at times like we're trapped. It's also a good thing in, in this way. I think if we always got what we wanted immediately, we would find life meaningless. Mm. I think there's a sense to that. Like, for example, uh, like what David was saying with the audio stuff. Well, he doesn't have maybe the knowledge when he was younger to do the audio stuff that he does now. But that was the skill he was able to acquire, and now he's able to appreciate it since he's acquired it. Same with your music. Mm -hmm. You're able to acquire that skill, and through working on it, you've gained it. So so through work, you, in a sense, gain can with acquiring certain skills, you gain more freedom, and yet you also trap yourself. And so freedom, and it's kind of a paradox like that. You know, getting what we want in one way frees us up, and in another way, it binds us to new things, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, there have been studies done that I've read about, and it, it's been a while since I've read it, so I don't remember the details, but if you give people an environment where they want for nothing, you can just have anything. Food's provided, shelter is provided, you can just do whatever you want, you lose you lose meaning. You do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they did an experiment, I don't remember if it was mice or rats, but they basically set up a little mouse utopia where... The mouse, the mice, you know, had food, had water, had everything they needed, and it ended disastrously, including cannibalism. Yeah. Well, so because, because that's the thing. Part of the human condition, whether we want to admit it or not, is we want to struggle. There's a sense in which we want to struggle. Now, that's in the ultimate sense. In the moment, it's like, oh, I gotta go cut the grass. You know, it's like you don't actually want to cut the grass. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just my thing. I hate cutting the grass. <laughs> but well, honestly, I don't see a point in cutting the grass because it just grows back. It's just a constant. Well, it's optics. A constant nuisance. It's social optics, and you don't want to get fined by the city. That's literally the only two reasons. Yeah. Well, no. Well, it looks good. It does look good. Well, then you got bugs. You got snakes. You got you mice. got bugs. <laughs> you I know, got bugs. That type of thing. Well, I mean, more prefer- <laughs> more more dominant down south than it is up here. Um. Because, like, down south, yeah, you let the grass grow a little bit. I mean, you've got snakes running all over your yard. Oh, dude, that's um, great. Then you can go. Well, why can't I just them. take the grass out and live on a dirt lot? You can. You could. You'd just be very upset. Yeah. You'd be and a then sad you'd have man. The, then, for whatever reason, the city comes down on you because. This is gro- they'll say it's ugly. And yeah. then they'll make you pay a fine. Which is dumb. And that's something we're going to get into a little bit more. It's not too. dumb. It is dumb. I actually, no, I actually believe in uh, architecture laws. That you should be fined for building ugly buildings. <laughs> I truly think that. No, genuinely. Genuinely. Rome had it. It was a great idea. Think about it. Every every building you see, what is it? It's a block. That's depressing. You want to know why everyone's depressed? It's because our buildings are ugly. But see, here's then you then you fall into that tra- entrapment, like what you were saying, yes. of everything has to look the same. No, not everything has to look the same. No, it's, it's just- gonna have to. Because if you if you don't, if you vary outside of that. Because what are we doing? We're relying on man to tell us what looks good and what doesn't. True. And everybody and has different tastes. So what's ugly to me may be beautiful to someone else. No, no, no. Exactly. No. And no. so we can agree. to make it beauty is objective. To make oh it universal. Gosh. No, because to make it universal, what do we do? We say, okay, 
you've got to look like this. That they do this with uh, with schools, with like school uniforms yep. and um, you know uh, school lunches, mm-hmm. uh, because you know oh we don't like the way this looks on somebody, so we're gonna make a universal you know dress code. School uniforms uh, are a great idea. You know to make it to where everybody has to look the same, oh. and then it takes out the it takes out the uh, um the idealism Good. of the child Good. um you take these school lunches and you're like okay well one person's allergic to peanuts so you know we can't have fried chicken you know it, i mean it, you think i'm you, you uh, know. no i don't think you're kidding but i do think school uniforms are actually a phenomenal idea yeah. they i can think cook fried I, chicken in something other than peanut oil you know but see that's the thing is they and it's they they take things out because they well, want everybody to just fall in line. Well, it's, I'm not talking about things falling in line just to have them fall in line. I'm saying ugly buildings shouldn't exist because they're an eyesore and they cause people to kill themselves. But what do we, who gets to decide, decide what's ugly and what's not? Oh, people with good ideas, not people with but bad ideas. But then that's when, that's when everybody's like, okay, well, it has to look the exact same yep. as everything else. Well, it has to look good. It has to look good according to the standards of that society. And the standards of this society are very low. We think that a brick block is architecture. It's not. Okay? What we need is it doesn't have to specifically be Gothic or like Renaissance style or whatever, but it has to there has to be some effort. You can okay, even buildings in this area, you look at one building and you're like, oh, that building has no effort. You look at another building, even a similar building, but it has some effort because there's a difference in composition and there's difference in texture in the object you're looking at. Okay, so we as a society should be valuing beauty more than we do, even in our architecture, even in our buildings. And I don't think uniformity is always a bad thing. I also think freedom is not inherently virtuous. I'm not. I'm not talking about you know freedom uh, um, or anything like that. I'm talking about you know, and and it's something that yet yeah, I will disagree with you on, and I will disagree with a lot of people on on the fact of okay. I grew up doing school uniforms. Now we didn't have the way that you know it's like where it's like the exact same shirt, exact same pants as sure. everybody else. But a general like, dress. Code. It was a general dress code. Sure. Um, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a Christian school. Mm-hmm. Um, we were to wear, um, you know, khakis or it, they could be like blue, black, whatever. Couldn't be denim. Mm-hmm. You know, it was absolutely no denim. Um, on Wednesdays it was, uh, church clothes. It was, um, you know, dress pants, a shirt and a tie. Um, you know, that was, that was our dress code. Um, now I know that that is different given into a lot of other schools where it is literally the exact same thing. You look like a bunch of, you know, um, a bunch of clones just walking out there. Yeah. Then you'll actually have to ha- have personality instead of making your jacket, your personality. But see, here's where, here's where I, here's where I differ in some of this of, um, and it, it, it falls in line of the conversation um, not be, or, you know, having to do things that we don't want to do a lot of times it takes the imagination out of the people. Mm-hmm. We wonder what happened to our children, why they just have absolutely no imagination. Um, but we subject them to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Now mm-hmm. I am going to say that, you know, I, I'm not the type of just Oh, let the children just be free. Let them do let whatever the children they want. Be free. You know, I, I'm not like I, I'm not saying that at all because you do have to have your standards. You do have to have your ground rules. You do have to have your limits, sure. like what we've talked about. You know, because yeah, if it wasn't for some of the limits that we had growing up, um, chances are I wouldn't be alive. Sure. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's kind of like. You let them, you let people have their personality. You let them have their ideals. You let sure. them have their identity within a limit. Sure. Um, you know, or and well, well. So I, I, I think, I, I think there's there's a sense in which that's correct. I don't think I think there's good ideals and there's bad ideals, 
and I don't think I I don't think beauty is subjective. I also don't think truth is subjective. And I think the main issue in our society is we, even those who say truth is objective, permit false ideas to be shared. And uh, and I, this I don't want to get into a freedom of speech thing at all. Um, but that that is a generally it's a thing that people accept, but they don't ask why they accept it. It just sounds good. They're like, hey, yeah, freedom of speech. It's like, no, most people are dumb, and most people shouldn't talk. I have to agree with that one. Um, so, so, and it's, and then, then you think of like democracy. Well, why do we have democracy? Because, well, everyone should get to have an opinion. Well, no, because if, for example, if we were, I think I have give, you met some of my former coworkers. Exactly. <laughs> so, so if you think of like a, a boat, okay, and we need someone to steer this boat, okay, and this boat is a nation, whatever a nation it might be, um, are we gonna vote on it? Or is the guy with 30 years experience just going to run the boat? Well, and again, like I said, you know, there has to be those limits, um, you know, within. All the limits. <laughs> but if, if we go off of what you were saying, and, and we'll kind of preference this a little bit more and then we'll, we'll mm-hmm. move on some, mm-hmm. um, you know, being able to do things that we want to do it gives us that that sense of identity. For example, okay, now, and I, I know this just kind of like offshoots just a little bit. Um, my daughter loves to draw. Sure. Okay. Can you remember a time where you drew on your walls at home? No. Really? You never got to do that? <laughs> no, no, I never wanted to do that. Uh, have you done it, though? No. I, I really can't remember. Okay. <laughs> Me and Dave are normal. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I did. Loser. <laughs> I got the fire beat out of me. Yeah, because you drew on the freaking walls, dumbass. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it was my, like, that's what I wanted to do. And I and I did it. And I paid the consequen- consequences for it. Yeah, and now you're a better man for it. Now okay. you don't draw on the walls anymore. My daughter literally asked me, can I draw on the walls? Like, okay, I wa- we walked into her room and we set up a small, sure, a uh, small portion, ba- basically the back of her door. Uh-huh. And I was like, the door is what you can draw on. Mm. If you want to draw something on it, if you want to write something on it, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Do not go past that limit. Sure. It gave her that little bit of the freedom uh, uh, of, of being able to express her ideas in a way that she wanted to, but still had those limits of, you can't go past these lines. Sure. And I think that's where, you know, uh, again, you know, we fall into that, you know, being able to do stuff that we just want to do, but there's limitations to it. Um, sometimes limitations are a good thing. A lot of times they are a good thing. I, I will say that. But I, I think making everything basically universal for the sake of, you know, I don't like this, so you can't do it. Yep. That's where we run into an issue. Um, Just not even as, you know, a nation, just as people in general, because, you know, Dave said it, what looks good to him may not look good to you. Right. And Dave's wrong. You know, what, (laughs) what you think is what you think the, the, the definition of beauty is not what I think the definition of beauty is. I, I, I actually do think you can argue that beauty is objective. Not completely objective, but primarily objective. Um, because beauty is linked with aesthetics. And it, uh, you, if you can prove that aesthetics are objective and so, uh, via symmetry, then you can prove that beauty is, in a sense, objective. Um, now, people have... Now, now, People have there's a difference I think between attraction and beauty because there are many people who are very attracted to very ugly people. Mm-hmm. Okay, now doesn't mean they don't think that person's attractive. That person, no matter how attracted you are to them, is still not beautiful. But then we fall I, in. <laughs> but, but then we fall into and and this this could actually be an entire segment on itself. Um, but then we fall into who gets to set those standards because history, history it, gets set a, a lot of times, but see a lot of the times like right now it's like, you know, and, and I say this never really thought that I would really just 
be, you know, uh, on this side of it, but having a daughter Mm -hmm. and seeing the way that she presents herself sometimes based on what other people say she should be, it makes me mad Yeah, because, you know, more preferent, more preference, can't say the word, proliferant in, you know, the, the late nineties, early two thousands, you had all of these magazines that were like, this is the definition of beauty. If you don't have, you know, the pointed chin, uh, you're not considered attractive. If you don't have, you know, blue eyes, you're not considered attractive. If you don't weigh a certain amount of weight, you're not considered, you know, and, and I think it's like, yes, there are what we, there are what a lot of people find attractive. Sure. But we base it off of what, for the sake of it, we base it off of what Hollywood says, well, this is what should be. Right. And we put so much pressure on people nowadays, especially like our younger generations, and we wonder why they, you know, why like suicide rates skyrocket. We wonder why divorce rates are are the way that they are. We wonder why, you know, it's like, um, you see it all over TikTok. Why, you know, so many men would just rather be alone than be with a woman that, you know, expects them to be, you know, they have to bring six figures home. They have to be a certain height. They have to have a certain muscle mass yeah. and stuff like that. And it's like we we put these limits on ourselves mm-hmm. to the point where it's like we don't get to be who we want to be. Yeah, I like the double standard there because, it, and it's been presented this way on TikTok. But if a woman has preferences, she just have pref- has preferences. But if a man has similar preferences, he's a misogynist. Right. He's not giving her a fair chance. Was, right. The, the joke is, uh, if wait, women keep telling me Lizzo is beautiful, but every time I say they look like Lizzo, they cry. <laughs> <laughs> but right. So yeah. but, well, so here's the thing. What you pointed out was really interesting because in the early 2000s, what did we see a lot of? anorexia, mm-hmm. right? You had a lot of women starving themselves. Well, what do you have now? Well, now you have this huge acceptance movement. What's happening now with young women? Obesity. Mm-hmm. Um, now, some people have a genetic predisposition towards that, and it's harder. But a lot of these women don't. They're mm-hmm. just sad, and they're eating their feelings, and it's unhealthy in a different way. Now, they're not starving themselves, but they're setting themselves up for um, diabetes, early heart attacks, uh, aneurysms, right? And so, mm-hmm. and it's not something we like to talk about because we don't like talking about girls starving themselves. We don't like talking about girls overeating and men too. Um, Mm -hmm. But women are more focused on appearance and image typically. So it's more related to them on that. Um, But the, well, well, here's the thing. I don't think anyone encouraging someone to overeat, which, which a lot of these women do Um, just, well, do whatever and feel good. I don't think they should be able to have public voices. Also, women who say like that thin inspiration stuff and like starve yourself and measure their legs to like three inches, they shouldn't have a public voice either. Mm-hmm. So, well, when we're talking about beauty and attractiveness and all these things, what is generally accepted amongst all cultures? Health. Health is attractive. I was just about to say there needs to be a health movement. There's a, a exactly. healthy is exactly. beautiful. Healthy right. is beautiful, and so healthy doesn't look like starving yourself. But it also doesn't look like overeating and eating your feelings. Mm -hmm. And so... um, And a lot of that starts with mental health as well. Sure. And when I say that beauty is objective, especially when we're talking about people, well, everyone will agree that they want a healthy person over someone who's not healthy. Now, the other thing is, what you said was, was really good there, where you're talking about these men. And one of the things that this relates to what Dave said about those rats in that paradise, if I if a man has unlimited access to free pornography right for free and he can see any woman he wants doing any act he wants whenever he wants and it's socially acceptable now Mm -hmm. for that to be the case and it's socially acceptable for women more and more to make it and put it on OnlyFans. you get these young girls in college making paying off their tuition with it so why would they stop so now you've made this this pornify culture where the women get a ton of money and the men get unlimited uh, sexual uh, pleasure, right. yeah. but what never happens? There's no intimacy. Mm. 
no real intimacy. So what? Well, what? What's something guys don't want to do nowadays? Well, they, oh, dude, I don't want to go out and have to like care about a girl's feelings when I could just watch porn. Well, it's like no, because if you don't do that, you're gonna you're gonna die alone. Like like that that that's the fact. So there's a sense in which doing what we don't want to do draws out the best in us. Right. Right. Now there's little things we don't want to do. Like ah, like I don't want to. I don't want to cut the grass today. You can wait a day. Whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But the big things we can't hold off. The big things. So when and this I think will help us connect what we're saying because I agree with a lot of what you're saying about control. So there should be more control on the serious things and less control on the menial things, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to our self control of ourselves. Right. And I think that's a good middle ground for for yeah. what we were both saying. And, and I do agree with that. And and that that is kind of that is basically what I. My, uh, my thought, uh, idea on it too, is you know, the the issue is a lot of times we focus on those little things. Yeah. Uh, we focus on you know it's like oh you know I have to go cut the grass I have to go wash the dishes I have to you know I, I have to cook dinner oh I actually have to get up and take care of my child Boom. you know it's like <laughs> we. And I'm not saying that taking care of a child is a small thing because it is a very big just thing. Just like doing the dishes and cutting the grass. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people think of it that well, way. But that's though. the problem. You know, is they're mixing and, the small things with the big things. Yes. Yeah. And and you know, it's like yeah, there needs to be the limits, but at the same time, there needs to be that room for the, you know, the adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, now moving on just a little bit here. Uh, you know, what is trying to think of even how to how to bring this in what because it, it's gonna it's gonna just completely change okay. the the dynamic of what we were just talking about here um but what is something that we have to do today that we shouldn't have to now let me say as far as and i'm not again i'm not talking about like doing chores i'm not sure. talking about going to work um, cause yeah, you know, it's like a, the perfect society. We wouldn't have to work. We wouldn't have to do anything, but I'm talking about like in general, like what is something that we honestly shouldn't have to do that we were made to do? Pay income tax. That's actually where I want pay to income that tax. That is actually the one thing I'm thinking. Of. I understand. So like, okay, I get it. As even as an authoritarian, I like taxes. I have to like taxes for me to have the view of government that I have. But <laughs> so you get a job, you get a paycheck. The government takes a piece. You buy a big something. Piece you, a big big piece. You buy something. They take a piece. You sell something. They take a piece. You invest in something. They take a piece. So from the time you get the money to the time you don't have it anymore, they have taken a piece every single time. Yeah. Now, every transaction. Exactly. Even the ones they're not directly involved in. Now, I think the government has a right to tax things they're involved in. Postage. Fine. <laughs> you can tax my postage. Or interstate commerce. Large commerce between states where the federal government is involved. Fine. Um, even some level of, if you're starting a business, maybe there's some taxes involved. Fine. But the, the idea that the, my labor itself is taxed, that's bull. Mm -hmm. Cause you didn't do anything. All right. Um, I think, yeah, I think sales tax and income tax are bull. I think other forms of taxes can be at times required, but like anything the government is directly involved in or selling to you, then they can tax. But, but otherwise, no. And 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 kind of preference here. And again, it's one of those things where we can say we can pull up an idea and then just take off with it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, of then comes the 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 question of well, what is the government not involved in nowadays? Nothing, because everything. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know the fact of uh, turning on a faucet and having water that's coming from you know a a distribution center okay water they didn't make water they didn't create the water uh, all, all they did they is they trapped it in a pool and put it in a pipe and even then they didn't even do that they let rainwater do that you know so so here's the thing if you don't want to pay for water there's a way you cannot pay for water 
when your neighbor isn't looking, you just run to their house, you turn their faucet on, <laughs> you can run back outside. No, I'm kidding. Um, you can actually get these, um, so that you can get these uh, things that link to your, um, what is it, your uh, gutter. They catch the gutter water and then they feed it. Rain in. barrel. Yeah, yeah. And then they, but they like filter it and then you can have that filtered water. Now that's primarily for when the water goes off, but what, you know, but you can put that on your house and on your garage. And then if you need fresh water needed in an emergency, you can have it. But see, here's the thing is they find a way to tax that too. <laughs> tax my bucket water? Or to outlaw Are you kidding it? me? They, they figured out a way to, to tax solar, uh, Solar panels. There are places where rain barrels, barrels are illegal. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. What? Yeah. Dude, no, no. That's how I want to die. I want to die defending my rain barrel <laughs> with a musket. <laughs> it's like... A musket and a tomahawk. Yeah, yeah. Bald. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you, my man. Bald man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be the final frontier. Because I, I, I followed the government I, all the way up until then. They were like, sir, hand over your musket and water bucket. You can't have it all. <laughs> But uh, you know, and that, that's the thing is, is the government is directly, well, indirectly involved in literally everything. Um, you know, just like the the building that we're in, okay, it, it, it is a public library, but it is a city owned. Actually, I think it's a county owned mm. library, which means that the county. Gives money to the library to do stuff. To do stuff. Yeah. But how does the how does the library or how does the county get the money? Well, then they tax the people, and it's like basically you walk in, you're getting a book, you're paying to borrow a book. You know, sure. you pay to 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 borrow a a movie. Now, granted, there. I mean, I know that's how like authors, that's how uh, celebrities and things like that make their money. But getting into the government side of it, of, you know, yes, Dave is correct. There are places where the, the rain buckets are illegal to have. And if you, if you are caught with one, you are fined tremendously for it. Um, there are places that solar panels are illegal to have. Um, and I remember when solar panels first came out, you know, it was like the greatest thing ever because that, that was like, free renewable energy mm. well then the government started taxing for you using a, a solar panel and a lot of times the the taxes on solar panels were more than it was to actually pay a, a, an electric bill yeah um you know it's like it, that's the type of thing that 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 bothers me is we are made to do these types of things that honestly we shouldn't have to sure you know, I I on a, I I agree. Some taxes yeah. are okay because that's how government that that's how the government you know gets the money to do uh, to fund what it needs to do. That's how a lot of places are funded. Yeah, um, it is through certain taxes. But then it becomes a a point where seventy five percent of our paycheck is gone, mm -hmm. and we're expected to live off the twenty five percent and that 25 percent is to pay the bills so we can survive till the next paycheck comes mm. to do it all over again yeah. um my problem with taxes is that the government flat out lies to you about where they go yes oh this is going to fix the roads and fund the schools well the roads are crap and the schools are underfunded what are you using my money for well, well, right. so, well so this is the thing and i i don't trust schools at all because Buildings don't actually cost that much to upkeep. Okay, they really don't. They cost a lot, but they don't cost as much as they say they cost. The way a lot of these kids are nowadays, where it's destruction, it's like full-on destruction. Well, I ain't got to pay for it. Get rid of the kid. Send them home. Make them homeschooled. That's what the government should do. Instead of <laughs> – you should get – the school district should get money – Based on how smart the kids are, not how many kids they have. And a lot, it, it used to be that way, though. It used yeah, to be know, that way. Where and then, they were was, like, then they were like, that's racist. Yeah. Well, yeah, then it was the yeah, whole. You offended me, so, you know. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. For example, it's funny that you mentioned that because the moment you said it, uh, something came to mind. Um, Dave knows about this one. They actually picked up the machine um, last week. Oh, the machine. We had a school that dropped off a certain piece of equipment that 
the star football player of this small school hijacked the piece of equipment, okay. ran it into a tree, okay. <laughs> completely totaled out the equipment, mm-hmm. and the school said, well, we'll just pay for it. Really? Yeah. Your tax no dollars insurance, at work. No, ins- no insurance involved. Well, and here's the thing is they are a non, they're, they're not a public school. Oh. It is a private school. So the people who are like all the rest of the kids. This is Gabriel Richard, wasn't it? I'm not mentioning oh. names. <laughs> I, I'm not mentioning names because we are not, you know, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to get into that. Cause sorry. I, um, just, I, I know all I need to know now, but it being a, a private school, um, all of the kids that had absolutely nothing to do with it basically had to pay for this one person's mm. mistake instead of that person paying for his screw up, sure. paying the consequences. We live in a society right now, and I know it's it's kind of like yeah, at the very least he should get some detention or some kind of punishment. For yeah, that. some suspension. Like I get, he's a kid; he can't afford to fix. Uh, what was it, a gator or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, but. He sh- he needs to own up to that in some way. He ne- he needs to pay it back in some way, or at least or at least the parents, because yeah. again, it's the parents' thing. And here's the thing about it: is the parents wanted to sue the school because it put the child in danger. Shut up. Um, that that's the thing that gets me is like, you know, we talk about not wanting to do things. We are having to pay for other people's mistakes. We are paying the consequences for other people's problems. Um, you know, not to get really into this, we are paying for the war in the Ukraine because all of our taxes are, you know, all of our tax money and all of this, you know, billions, billions, dollars, yeah, billions um, that's going over there. And then they're, they're sitting back and they're like, well, we need more. We need more. We need more. Yes. And then we're sitting, you know, the U S is sitting here and instead of just being like, you know what, we're not going to get involved because you guys, this is between you two. Yeah. This is between country and country. Um, we just keep dumping stuff into it. Yeah. Well, what, well, well, the problem with the United States is we've done this in every war. We're like, Oh, we're just going to give money. We won't get involved. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait, one of our ships blew up by them. Oh, t- How'd that happen? Looks like we got to go invade. Oh, wait. 30 years later, we find out we blew up our own ship. No. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little conspiracy theory for you guys. Well, but. and I mean, uh, it's unfortunate because a lot of the <laughs> conspiracy theories are, are true. True. Um, a good conspiracy theory, assuming it's just a theory, still has like a very good kernel of truth and plausibility to it. Yeah. True. That's yeah. th- that is the really... A distressing part here is the plausibility of some of these. Yeah. It's easy to believe them. Well, so, like, like Pearl Harbor, and I don't know if you guys agree with me on this one, but there's a conspiracy theory that they knew it was going to happen, and that they let it happen so they could get involved in the war in Japan. Um, I don't believe that. And then, but well, see, if someone doesn't believe that, you know, they like Roosevelt. If someone does believe it. No, you know they don't. I, like I, Roosevelt. I wasn't. I wasn't a Roosevelt fan. Uh, I'm, I'm not a Roosevelt fan because I didn't like a lot of the Based. Uh, a lot of the policies that he was on. Um, Same with like in the Spanish American War, they blew up that. The the thing that gets <laughs> the me, ship. the thing that gets me with it, and the reason why I don't want to believe anything like that is because so many of our military died that day. And for the government to basically say, we're going to let this happen for the sake of getting involved in something. I know that's the conspiracy theory with 9-11. I know that's the conspiracy theory. I don't think, I don't with... think 9-11 was an inside job. I don't, but I do think. I do. Oh, you think. I, I do. So do you think they caused it or they permitted it? I think they permitted it. I think that too. I don't think they caused it. I don't like think they put bombs in it. No. The, but I think it was allowed to happen. No, I, I think they permitted it because they're, they're okay. And and this really gets into it. Um, uh, Things we don't want to do. We don't want to do nine eleven. <laughs> yes, we don't. We really, don't want to do don't it. Don't want to do this. Um, but, there uh, are there there are theories around it, and we may actually get into a, an episode where we talk about conspiracy theories. So down. Um, but you know, it's like I I I think a lot of the times to to kind of. Sum it to sum this all up. A lot of the times we 
are having to pay for other people's decisions. Sure. And that's the thing that I don't like is because we're being forced to do it. Oh. Um, you know, I can remember as a child, uh, you know, if I messed up, if I made a mistake, I paid for that. Sure. You know, yeah, it um, wasn't just sent off to somebody else to Yeah. Nobody else got spanked when you when you misbehaved. Right. right. It it was it was me. Um, you know, it's like my daughter, you know, I, I try to instill in her a lot of times of if you make a mistake, you've got to pay the consequences for it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I cannot stand the well, it wasn't my fault. You were caught with you know, the knife in your hand. How is it not your fault? Um, sure. you know, you, you get what I'm saying. And it's like, well, it's the fault of whoever left that knife out for me to grab, you know? Exactly. And that, that's, that's the problem is that's actually the gun argument. You're in, that's... you're endangering the child by leaving that gator there. Yeah. How yeah, in that dare locked, you, in yeah. that locked shed, you yeah, know, you, you left the key for him to grab and, 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 you know, almost hurt himself and everybody else you know, because your kid's just a punk and, and wasn't spanked enough as a child. Yep. Um, kid's a punk. You know, <laughs> uh, it, it, it it gets me, again, because now the people that are not involved in that situation have to, in in one way or another, they have to pay for it. You know, the school has to pay for it. Well, then how does the school make their money back? They take the tuition from, you know, the the children that had nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know, but and... I think it's especially true in college. Like that's one of the things I can't stand is, like, college is professors don't get paid much, and it's expensive. Where's that money going? Oh, bureaucrats. That's where that money's going. We need a new football field, man. No, no, because the football field makes enough money to pay for everyone's tuition. Yeah. So shut up. Like I hate I hate that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like there's so, there's tens of millions of dollars going to people who sit on boards and do nothing. But they can't get fired because that's what the system is there to perpetuate. And then there's no one getting tenure anymore. There's just a ton of adjunct professors who make less than high school teachers. For example, when I was in high school, my goal was to pursue a doctorate in theology. I thought I'd get my bachelor's in biblical studies, then I'd get an MDiv, and then I'd do a doctorate in theology. I thought I'd be able to be a theology professor. And um, the money was there to do it. I could have done it. But the problem was I looked at the job prospects. We have a lot of PhDs floating around who can't even get it paid like a high school teacher. Okay? So not even just for that field, for other fields too. And so it's like... The, the money just goes to the wrong places, and it's mishandled. So why should I, we're talking about things we don't want to do, why should I have to give money to a state school if it's going to be mishandled? That reminds me of the BS argument that, oh, you should do it for the passion, for the love of the work. Well, I still need to eat. No, you don't. Eat yeah. paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and it leads into another uh, another discussion as well of, you know, we have these professors, we have these school teachers, high school teachers. Uh, uh, one of my, my best friends um, was a school teacher for a while. Mm -hmm. And he literally, and, and I hope he doesn't mind me, mind me saying this because I know he listens to the show. Um, he literally went into a drastic state of depression mm. because of... The, the school system that he was involved in um, wasn't paying him enough to teach these children. And so it was kind of like, well, why should I teach if I'm not being compensated for it? And I think that's where a lot of, you know, a lot of it boils down to is we want these, we are trusting these people to teach our children, but we're not paying them enough to actually teach them. But then we go back and we're like, you know, a lot of the school systems are like, well, teach them and then we'll, we'll pay you what you're worth. Mm. And it never equals out to the same, you know, it's like basically in the, the, the school system in the colleges, uh, the old adage is absolutely true. You get what you pay for. It's true. Um, now, unfortunately 
the the people that are paying it are the ones that are going to the school. Um, the school is not paying the teachers enough, so the teachers don't care enough to actually teach the children, and it's trickling down like a waterfall of, you know, now we have these incompetent people that are growing up in society and are sitting back not knowing how to do their job. Sure. And, and it's not necessarily their fault. They weren't disciplined as children and they weren't taught properly because their teachers weren't making enough to eat food. Well, right. well so I'll say this because I'm, I'm substituted at a charter school. Um, and I, I'm okay with my pay right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I could understand how someone wouldn't be, someone mm -hmm. in a different position. Wait till you have a mortgage. See, that's what I'm saying. Right now, I don't pay rent. Um, and I'm okay. it's an okay job for me right now. Um, and I hope in the near future to get a, the not just substitute, but actually teaching there and make a little more. But even if I were teaching there, it wouldn't be enough for a family. Mm -hmm. I would need something else or I would need my spouse to be working also. And so there's a sense in which there's very few people who have lifestyles who it, 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 you would have to be lucky to teach and afford it. And um, if I have a, most people who get into teaching do it because they love people or they love the topic and they want to teach people that topic. And those are the type of people you want teaching. People who care more about that than the money. But if you don't give them enough, they're going to become embittered. And that's the sad thing about the education system is it takes these optimistic, bright-eyed educators and it turns them into cynical people who are scraping do scraping by to get a dollar. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and want to fix society, change that. And again, it, it gives it into the that limit uh, too. As you're as you're talking about this, it made me think about too, because um, you had mentioned like school boards, college mm -hmm. boards, and you know uh, boards of education, the Department of God, the Department of Education, um, the, the the worst department we could ever have in this. In, in the society it's just Dave. um because what do they do they they take they take it and they say like you can only teach this mm. you know forget you know forget history forget uh world history forget american history no you can only teach this part of it mm. everything else is fight is is false um and so a lot of the people that have gone to college uh that have gone to school for the that history degree of being able to teach history and 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 they they are passionate about it mm -hmm. are now subjected to this little bottleneck of I can only say this or I'm going to sure. lose my job. Sure. And you know uh, uh when it comes to like math I I have to be careful because the common core crap the maths are going to get you. Oh man, it's it's awful. Yeah. Like I I've sat down with my daughter and and tried to help her do her homework and she shows me like all of the five steps that she has to do to make 2 and 2 equal 4. Um, you know, and I'm just like I'm sitting back and I'm like, "Why don't you just add this and this?" Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and 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 it's just Use like, your fingers. Count. That's how I that's how I learned a lot of times, you know, um, but it's just like it, it goes back to the whole you have these people that are raking in the money saying you can only do this. You know, you can only teach X when you really need to be teaching Y. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like it, it becomes that that waterfall effect again of now we live in a society that kids can't even make a proper McDonald's sandwich, mm. but yet they want $20 an hour. Well, education, education sucks because we changed the method of education. So um, most people view the dark ages as like, oh, just stupid people who couldn't read and are farmers and stuff. That's dumb. Mm -hmm. Our university system at its peak was the Middle Ages and the Renaissance era. Um, how long do you think it would take for someone nowadays to get a doctorate in a field? Lifetime. No, like uh, to go from bachelor's to doctorate, how long would no. it take? It used to it takes it takes about eight years. Yeah, it okay. used to take about it used to take about ten to ten to fifteen years to get a proper doctorate. So in, the, in a field in the in the medieval era, it was twenty, mm -hmm. like almost minimum twenty. So from beginning a bachelor's to your doctorate. Um, and what the, the way they would structure the schools, um, 
it from medieval into the Renaissance is there were certain books that you had to read before you could go on to the next step. Mm. Now they had, what they meant was that they had a reading curriculum um, that was, that was specifically set up to teach you how to think. So you would have to, so for example, as a, as a, like essentially what they would view as a middle schooler, you had to write a commentary on Aristotle's logic and then you had to lecture on it mm. to be able to get to high school. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we teach fourth graders and fifth graders how to read and write a little paragraph about a kitty and a doggy, and then we send them to middle school. No, you're not ready for middle school. Well, you and, don't know how to read yet. And like, unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of the kids that are moved on into these upper uh, uh, classes, they don't know how to properly read. They don't know how to, you know, you know, God forbid somebody gives them something in cursive, you know, they'll, they'll you know, they'll have a heart attack. As a dyslexic um, person, I don't like cursive. I think it's a mistake. I love cursive. Oh, it's not, I, it's I not love right. Cursive. It's, it's letters that break the rule of letters. They should, it's horrible. <laughs> it's not how le- letters should be letters. Not the rules don't change on letters. <laughs> this is what made me an authoritarian was cursive. <laughs> the rules don't change. Letters are letters, but it's it's one of those things where it showed, you know, at at back then. Can't it's believe like, you like cursive. I'm still mad about this. We'll see. Okay, Son of a... but it, it 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 showed the intelligence of the person at the time. If you can, I mean, granted, when when I was growing up, when I was in school, everybody had to learn how to write cursive. I, I did too. I and still now it. it's like nobody knows what cursive is. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I, I like the, the whole TikTok, um, you know, there's a, there's a TikTok meme that goes around that and it's like how to cripple a generation, uh, you know, write in cursive and drive manual transmissions. Um, you know, the Gen Z response to writing in cursive is I might not be able to write in cursive, but I just made 2 million on drop shipping. <laughs> That's the Gen Z response. But, you know, but well, I think that does go to show that the, the kind of uh, counterpoint or the retort to that is that, for instance, driving a manual transit transmission for the most part is an outdated sure. practice. Right. Um, there are certain cars that you need that for, but um, those are the kind of cars that the average person can't afford. Sure. So it, it's one of those things where you don't need to learn it. Just like um, the newest generation sucks with computers now. They know how to operate a phone or a tablet. But like the laptop sitting in front of me, they're, they're getting kind of lost. Because unfortunately, traditional desktop computers even are just, they're falling by the wayside. They're becoming outdated and everything is shifting more towards a mobile platform. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're stupid. It's just I haven't had to learn this. This isn't something that's been necessary in my right. life. Right, but so those are accidental things. How to drive a car, how to write in cursive, how to how to work a computer. Well, that's less accidental. But the building, It's still necessary in a lot of jobs, sure. yes. But the building blocks for how to think and how to read, those have become less. Mm-hmm. So the foundations are, like, horrible. Now, it's easier to learn how to use something if you know how to think well. It's easier to learn a skill if you know how to read. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem is we define literacy as just being able to uh, understand the word on the page as its own word. That's not literacy, okay? That is like such a bad that is such a bad definition. You actually need to be able to read and understand and commentate on what you're reading. Now, I did some of that in school, but not nearly enough. Like. For example, in school, we would read, like, selections from books. It shouldn't be, and I know this sounds hard, especially for a lot of modern people, but you should be giving students books home from high school, and by the end of the week, they should come back with a paper Mm -hmm. on the whole book, okay? And now that's kind of hard because now there's different ways to cheat with chat GPT, but we should be having higher standards through education not lower. We need to be challenging the students. And if we actually tell them why we're challenging them, they'll rise to the occasion. Well, and this this brings up the perfect point of, you know, back into the conversation of a lot of the people who are in charge of doing that, mm-hmm. like a lot of our school uh, school teachers, a lot of the school board, a lot of the, the parents, they didn't want to do that growing up. So now they're not, let, they're not making their children do sure. it now. And it, it, it's going to 
you know, it, it's that whole circle that comes around to bite everybody of now we are intentionally making people basically we're intentionally putting people into the dark ages yeah. uh, of, you know, just because, well, I didn't want to do it growing up, so I'm not going to make them do it, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, and it, it brings me into the next, the next question. And I know that, you know, we, we've carried on on, on this quite a bit of, uh, of, you know, something that we did growing up that we were made to do mm -hmm. that we still do today. Sure. Um, you know, it's like, I, you you brought up the whole the whole selection of books and things like that. Um, yeah, we had poems that we would have to read, and sure. we would read them out loud. We'd read them in class. Um, there were certain books that we would read in class and that type of thing. And we weren't forced to read books, but then we you know you do it like a book report, mm -hmm. and you had to read the book. You had to read the book, and it's like a lot of times you were given like a selection of books to read. Um, you know, or to choose from. And the teacher knew uh, what the book was. You know, either they've read it before or they, they had the idea or they were reading it. You know, a lot of the times the teachers that I grew up with would read the books that were on the list just so they knew, you know, we read them mm. based on our book mm -hmm. report. Um, I hated it. <laughs> I absolutely hated reading when I was growing up. Sure. Now I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've got a huge you know, library of, of books at home. Now, granted, some of them I haven't worked through. Fiction um, books. Some of them are fiction. How dare you? No, no, fiction books are fine. I'm just, I'm just a, a tool, so I, I make fun of people for reading <laughs> fiction. It's um, fine to read fiction. They're, it's better than most nonfiction. <laughs> but it's like, it, it's like you know, I, I grew up now, and it's like, yeah, I like reading books. Sure. And so now that I've got my daughter... Um, you know, she wants to watch a certain movie. Nope. Read the book first. Yeah. That's, you read the book great. first. Though we did that with the whole, uh, with most of the Harry Potter series. That's cool. Um, of, you know, she wanted to watch the first Harry Potter movie. All right. You have to read the book first. Mm. You know, she was five at the time. I was like, you know what? I will sit down with you and we will read together. I love that. And we read the entire book and then we watched the movie. And she was able to pick up differences of what the book said versus what the movie says. Um, moving on to book two, book three, book four, book five, you know, it's like, I think we're, we're at like book five and then it kind of got lost because of just, you know, certain, uh, things that, that had, were going on at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so what you just described the way you and your daughter went and read Harry Potter before watching the movies, I would consider that an example of parenting done right, because you didn't just force the kid to do something she didn't want to do. You were passionate about reading and you shared that with her. Mm. That's different from doing something, forcing a kid to do something, and then they resent you for it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you cultivated a love of uh, literature in her when you did this. She she does like to read. Um, she is obviously just like a you know any, any other child where it's, you know, she'd rather watch the movie first and, sure. or, or, you know, she'd rather just play video games or, you know, uh, any kind of technology type stuff. But there are times where she's come down to, to me and is like, Hey, I want a book to read. And with my library, I'm just like, okay, here you go. You know, and it's like, and there are times where I I've given her a book that she doesn't really want and she'll kind of read it and then she'll, you know, put it away or whatever. But it's like, uh, you know, we've told her before, uh, uh, you know, on certain things, if there's a book, you have to read the book or you're not watching the movie. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of shows like where she wants to be at as far as like, okay, does she really care about wanting to watch this, you know, enough to actually make it through the book or, you know, is it just kind of a, you know, I want to do it, but my parents aren't letting me that type yeah. of thing. Yeah. And um, in my view, this contrasts with another parenting style where, you know, you make the kid do something and then they resent you for it. Mm -hmm. And then growing up, they hate that thing. Mm -hmm. That That's bad. If you have a passion for something, 
by all means, share that with your kid, but don't force that on your kid. Yeah. And I think a lot of it has to do with, and, and this is, we'll say this and then we'll wrap it up um, because this is going to end up being a part two because there are part, there are some other stuff yeah. that I really so want to get this into. This is going to end up being part one, but there will be a part two. Yes. Yeah. There will be a part two to this, uh, to this um we weren't planning that well remember how we were talking about planning we weren't planning that no um but i i i think where the contrast of you know forcing a child versus sharing the passion is a lot of parents because they grew up doing something that they didn't want to do now is like they're just telling the kids go do this well why well because i told you to You know, it's because that's what they were taught growing up and yeah, they end up resenting for it. Or you have that, that full other spectrum of, well, I was forced to do this growing up, so I'm never going to make my child do this. And then they grow up undisciplined. Yeah. They grow up undisciplined and, and, you know, so it's like, there has to be that fine line and not just in parenting, um, in society, uh, you know, in work, um, at the very beginning of it, Noah brought up, you know, the way that a boss should be a a manager is not a boss. He's a leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you lead by example. Um, you're down in the trenches helping, you know, your, uh, your employees to better themselves, to better the facility, to better the, the, um, the, the company. Um, but a lot of times it's like, well, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go make somebody else do it. And that's when you lose good employees. That's when you lose your children. That's when you lose society in a whole um, because we have too many bosses and not enough workers. Um, no, we have too many bosses and not enough leaders. Well, yeah. We, we need that, people that, who, that is a good one, too. As, especially the people leading our country. They, yeah. They're not listening. They're just doing. Yeah. So again, you know, to, to wrap this all up, um, there will be a part two. Um, when we come back, we will pick up on this and we will talk about, you know, things that we were made to do uh, that we still do now. Mm-hmm. And why do we still do those? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because, well... We'll get into that next week. Um, <laughs> so, uh, again, uh, this is... This has been fun. Um, I, I enjoy listening to both these guys' uh, commentary. I enjoy listening to both these, uh, both of these guys' ideas and thoughts. Um, we hope you do too. Uh, let us know what you think when you listen to our show. Head us, you know, send us a message. We, like I said, we're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're on twi- uh, Twitter. Not on yeah. Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> not yet. Um, we are working on video. Uh, parts but that that's going to be a little bit further down i have to buy an adapter cable (laughs) dave needs to buy more things in order to make (laughs) our things work yes um so again let us know what you guys think uh check us out on you know on on the socials um you know give us a follow give us a like uh we really enjoy and we really do appreciate hearing from you guys um Again, thank you all for listening. I'm John. I'm Dave. I'm Noah. Have a great day.